Okie dokie, so we're just waiting, waiting for people to get logged in, waiting for people to jump on. There's a couple of you on here already. Just getting everything finalized and sorted. Right, dudes. Oh, yeah, we're just getting a couple of things sorted and then we will be ready to rock and roll. Okie dokie. Okie kidoki kidoki. Just finalizing everything, just making sure it's all in working order here. See, there's goodness, there's quite a few that have joined in. How cool is this? Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, radio. What time is it? Three minutes. We've still got three minutes. Three minutes till we get go. Three minutes till we get started. Just wait for everybody. I don't want to start and then everybody says to me, well, what did you say for the first five minutes? So there's not a lot to be said. And uh, guys, just get your questions and get as many questions as you can. I can see on the side of my screen here, it's Going crazy, there's, there's loads to get through. Loads, loads, loads to get through. Goodness, drills, muscle strength, spin bowling. Wowza, okay, okay. We're almost there. We'll start pronto at one o'clock. So we've got a couple of minutes to go. A couple of minutes before we go. You can see a couple of my bats at the back there. That's... Uh, I think that was one of my first bats I ever used, actually, the woodworm, there at the back. Oh, there's a couple of others, yeah. There's another one. I scored a World Cup 100 with the one behind me, the green woodworm behind me. Righty, guys, we're still just waiting. Still just waiting. Just wait for, um, wait for the rest of the team to join. window there so if I hit it in the wrong direction or if I connect to that way go straight through the window that won't be a great way to start what time we got right we've got a minute to go minute to go before we go still questions coming in brilliant love it Plenty of questions. For those of you that just joined us, goodness, there's a few that have just joined actually in the last uh, 30 seconds or so. We're just waiting for everybody to come in, waiting for everybody to get involved, waiting for everybody to get ready before we start. You guys can hear me, right? This is the first time I'm doing this, so just send me a note down the side. Yes, 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 you can hear me. You can definitely hear me. This won't work if you can't hear me. And it's the first one. It's our first event. Yep. Okay. Good. So, sounds good. We should be ready to go. Yeah, by my clock, it is, yeah, it's one o'clock. So, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it is cricket season here in the UK. It is April. We are going into May and I'm as frustrated as anybody with no live sports. I'm also incredibly frustrated. I can't be covering the Indian Premier League that's on at the moment. County cricket can't start. Uh, a couple of other countries are going into their winters. I see there's some Australians on there and uh, they're going into their winters. South Africa is going into their winters. But whether it's the start of the season, whether it's the end of the season, you may have had a good season, you may have a season coming up, you may have had a good season the last time, you may not be playing as well as you want to be playing. And I think 
being in England and being in English conditions, it's absolutely beautiful out there. The sun is shining. Um, I suppose getting started in a cricket season is about getting your hands um, as hard as possible. When you'll be catching, you'll be catching a hard cricket ball. And at the start of every single season, it's also quite difficult to get started because every time the ball hits a finger, it's ouch, 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 ouch. If you haven't been playing for a while. And once you get a little knock on a hand, I mean, that can last the whole season. A knock on the hand, you bruise one of your bones here and it can knock uh, your season um, in all sorts of directions. So guys, little drills. If you've got a cricket ball in your house, it's going to annoy the hell out of your parents. It's going to annoy the hell out of everybody that's locked down at the moment. But to strengthen your hands and to toughen your hands up, this is just a little exercise. This is quite a hard ball. It's a very, very hard ball that I've got you. Quite a pronounced seam. And you can see, crazy hard. You can hear how hard it is. So this is a little exercise that you can do. Just walk around the house. When I used to play, I used to just walk around the house like this to keep my hands as hard as possible. Keep my hands ready for any ball that came with me in any direction. As quick as it came, my hands were always ready. And it's also just a nice little skill to be able to throw the ball from side to side. You can do it quicker. You can do it as slow as you want. And you can do it with me if you're wanting to stand up and do stuff when you've got a ball at the moment. After a while, I mean, goodness, I haven't done this. And oh, it's sore. It's real sore. The one other thing is doing it with a tennis ball. There is a big difference between a tennis ball and a hard cricket ball. A hard cricket ball is actually a little bit easier to catch because of how hard it is, because of how firm it is. And because of the fact that there's not a lot of bounce in the cricket ball, it's quite easy to catch. Yes, it's, a, it's more sore than a tennis ball, but I always found as a kid that if I played a lot of cricket with a tennis ball, I played a lot of cricket with my brothers and with my buddies in our back garden, playing with a tennis ball, my catching was amazing. The unfortunate thing is when I entered into the test arena, I wasn't playing those games of backyard cricket. It was cricket, 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 cricket. And my hands progressively became worse. It's quite weird. The more I played with the tennis ball, the better my catching was in a game. Tennis ball is not going to hurt your hand as much. Certainly not going to hurt your hand as much at all. However, you're going to have to make sure that the grip is tight. Soft grip's tight, but your hands are soft and you're able to make sure that the ball doesn't bounce out your hands. It'll want to bounce because it's a tennis ball, you can do it as fast as you want, and it'll want to bounce out like that. Whereas the cricket ball won't do it. So you'll have to concentrate a little bit harder, but these are nice little exercises to do. You can go back to the cricket ball, after you've been to the tennis ball, hopefully you guys have got a little cricket ball or a harder ball, and you can get back to it. So it's a lot easier to catch this ball. But you can do this, and you can do it all the way around. Now, bodies as well. Bodies are important in getting back into uh, the game of cricket. What I did after a long break is I needed to make sure that my backside, so my glutes and my thighs were very, very strong. All the pre-exercise uh, little drills and the warm-ups that I did with the, a lot of a lot of squat work. Um, I was a runner, so I did a lot of running. My whole career was running, 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 running as much as I could just to try and keep my legs as strong as possible because in the test arena or in county cricket or in any cricket that you play, you are always, always on your feet. Whether you're batting, you're in your feet, into a real strong position. You make quick, quick, quick decisions. So your head's making a decision, they're making a decision about whether to go forward, whether to come back, whether to go forward, whether to come back, whether to play a sweep shot, whether to play the switch hit shot, whatever you want to do, forward, back, you're always in your legs. So I wanted to make sure that my buttocks, my thighs, my hamstrings were as strong as they could be. I still do that today because I've got two young children that run around the house and we play a lot of sports in the garden. And I make sure that these guys are as strong as they are. There's a lot of cycling now, so whether it's running, running a kilometer, running two kilometers, running a couple, however long you want to do, but just get your squat game on point. On point. However you want to do this, and you have absolutely no excuse 
No excuse. All you need to be able to do in the squat is stand. We're all standing, and off she goes. Bang, bang. Start three, three sets, 10 reps. Build up every single day. Go to 11, go to 12, go to 13, go to 14. We're also about tuning in our eyes. Now, this is another little drill you can do at home. You have to tune your eyes in, whether you're bowling, whether you're catching or whether you're batting, your eyes have to be in tune with the pace of the game. To get your eyes in tune with the pace of the game again is the catching drills. You can throw the ball, bang, bang, tennis balls. Don't throw a cricket ball, bang, bang, bang. Do this for 60 seconds. It's going to annoy the hell out of neighbors or it could annoy the hell out of your parents, but you're getting better every day. You can go outside if you're lucky enough to have space outside and you can throw against other walls. Go for it. Bang. 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 That may be too easy for you. Then you start going one-handed. That may be too easy for you too. Then you can start going with your left hand. See? And that's a terror. That's a horror show. But I've only got a small piece of wall. I've got a window behind that. I don't want to throw it against the window. So there it is. Your left hand. And it's okay if you drop it. It's absolutely fine if you drop them. No drama at all if you drop them. I drop plenty. I dropped my first six or seven catches in international cricket. It was an absolute shocker. Couldn't catch a cold in the middle of winter because I wasn't playing tennis ball cricket. So guys, those are a few little things that you can do by yourself. Those are a few little exercises that you can do to get yourself going. I would suggest you do a minute on each. So you do a minute on each. A minute, two hands, a minute right hand, Minute left hand, and that ball's gone all over the place. Another little drill for any of the youngsters out there about making sure that we can concentrate. Concentration has got a lot to do with the great game that we play. Concentrate. Can you juggle? Everybody should be able to juggle. This is starting level. That's entry level. You can then add another ball if you want to. This is as far as I've got. One, two, three. So you can go up and you can go to three balls. But this is all about concentration. It's all about keeping your eyes on the ball, making sure you concentrate. So my concentration skills are one, two, three. 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 It's about concentrating. See, you set yourself a time. Can you do that for 20 seconds? Go for it for 20 seconds. Boom, 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 boom. And these are just little ways to improve you as a cricketer and to make you become a better cricketer. This is not about me teaching you straight away how to play the most flamboyant extra cover shot through the covers that look so beautiful. And there are stepping stones that allow you to get to a position where you can enjoy the most beautiful cover drive, or you can play the most glorious switch hit. And I know that for the last 24 hours, everybody's going switch it, switch it, switch it. I will be telling you a little bit about the switch hit when we um, come to the end of our show. I also want to tell you that in about 20 minutes time, I've got a pair of Oakleys. Beautiful, beautiful Oakleys, one of the latest range of Oakleys. I'm going to set a challenge for you guys. This pair of Oakleys will be yours. I'm going to set a challenge and I'm going to give these away at the end of the session. That's what I'm going to do. Beautiful pair of glasses, I'm going to give them away to you guys. Goodness, we've got some good numbers there. Jeez. So there we have it, guys. Small stepping stones, little exercises, little drills. And now I want to have a look at some of your questions to go through a couple of your questions. I've written down a few of them. Um, there were plenty on mental toughness and how you prepare for a game and how I prepare for a game. Now, preparing for a game is... I think understanding your basics, and it doesn't matter at what level you are playing. And I know there's a lot of school kids watching this. There's a lot of adults watching this. There's a lot of club cricketers that are watching this and are watching this. And it's all about the way that you keep things as simple as you can. Now, I was a batsman. Technique-wise, people talked about my technique. They criticized my technique at the start of my career because – you can say these are my stumps. That's my leg stump. Let me use my four and five pits here. 
There's um, five plus even. There's my middle stump. There's my old stump. I used to stand on leg stump. I used to stand on leg stump. I used to get right across my stumps, and I used to play a lot through the leg side, a lot through the leg side. And I could criticize heavily at the start of my career. Let me just tilt that screen up a little bit. I got criticized a lot at the start of my career because I used to get across my stumps and I used to play too much through the leg side. At the start of my career, there wasn't the DRS system. So I was able to play and miss a couple of times and judge from how far I was and the height I was, whether or not I would be out. I had a front foot as far down the wicket as possible. Then when DRS came and I needed to stand a little bit more leg side of the ball, and actually that started to make me play a lot better than when I was at the start of my career. So the preparation going into batting is where do you start? Well, my suggestions, and these are my masterclasses because it's the way that I play and it's the way that I believe um, I was successful and probably the reason why you're watching this is because you want to find out what made me successful and what tips I could give you to help you be successful. So I could talk about other players, but I'm going to talk about my technique because I know my technique. I trusted my technique. I understood my technique. And if I can help as many of you as possible and guide you along the way in a way in which you feel like you could bat the way that I batted, then that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, it's not one size fits all when it comes to batting. Not at all. Because you have three stunts. Leg stump, middle stump, and you've got off stump. Guys bat on leg stump, middle and leg, middle they bat all over the place. Some people have triggers, some people don't have triggers. But I used to stand on leg stump. I used to keep it as simple as possible. I used to stand on leg stump, and I'm going to talk about the way that I played after DRS came in because I believe that that's what I played my best, and that's what I played some of my greatest innings is. I used to stand on leg stump. And for me, walking out with as much pressure as I used to have to deal with was difficult. So what I made sure I did is that I practiced and I practiced perfection. Absolute perfection when I, when I uh, practiced. And that's exactly something that you guys can do. And if you don't do it, you've got to learn to do it. And it, it's the same in all sports, and it's the same thing that I keep drilling into my little man, Dylan. He's an aspiring sportsman, as talented as anything. But there are a lot of talented kids out there. There are a lot of you that are talented, but it's about the hard work that exists when you're actually playing that'll give you the, and you'll reap the rewards at the end of your innings, or at the end of your football game, or at the end of your rugby game. So, the training methods, keeping things very, very simple. How do I keep things simple when I bat? And this is a practice. You're standing on your guard. You take your guard. I don't care where you stand. You can stand middle. You can stand leg stump. You can stand two leg. I don't care where you bat. One thing I never did is I never did a huge amount of weight training for cricket. I never, ever did any weight training. And the reason I didn't do any weight training is because I didn't want my chest to become bigger I didn't want my arms to be bulky because I'm a great believer in making sure that you have a beautiful, beautiful flow of the bat that comes straight down in line with the stumps. Bowlers, bowl at your stumps. Bowlers, bowl in the channel. You've got to be enough to, you've got to be good enough to understand what to leave, what not to leave. But the majority of the time, you sit in every single team meeting and you discuss bowlers and they say, Top of all stump, they want to be hitting your stumps. Well, you, you don't want to be hitting all pads. You don't want to get your stump or your leg across the stumps. You want to be hitting the ball with your bat. The best way to do that is to be still on leg stump, to lift your bat up. If I was too bulky, I'd be out here. Big arms, big shoulders, big chest. My bat is there, is, there are my eyes. My bat is outside my eyes. Is that good? That's absolutely atrocious for me. Atrocious. I wanted to have my head right over the top. You can see how my eyes are right over my hand. The reason they're over my hands is because I feel like I'm in more control there. 
feel like my arms are nice and tight and ready. I'm ready to pounce. These are, these are my wickets, remember? Those are my wickets. I then used to trigger, and I don't care if you trigger because triggering only came into my game when the bowlers got faster. So in your age, whether you're a kid, little kid like my little boy Dylan, I don't teach Dylan about trigger, trigger movements at all. All I teach Dylan is about hitting the ball and making sure that he has a bat arc. And by arc, I mean a flow of the bat that allows him, when the ball's on his stumps, to hit the ball. I'm not worried about his left leg in particular. I don't tell him you've got to get your foot across to the ball or you've got to get your foot to the ball. And you're going to hear me say this a lot in a lot of the lessons that I do here. Your head is your heaviest part of your body. Heaviest part of your body. If your head goes, you have to go. If I'm standing here, you have to go. Wherever your head goes, you go. So your head is the heaviest part of your body. And also what's on your head? Your eyes are on your head. When your eyes are on your head, the closer you get to something, the easier you recognize it. If you guys are on your iPads, and I know a lot of kids and a lot of people that are on their iPhones, are on your, you're on your iPads, you're doing all sorts of stuff. If your iPad is over there, two meters away from you, and you're sitting there squinting going, what does that say? What's that Fortnite doing? What's that guy doing on YouTube? What's he doing? Whereas if it's right up close here and personal, I know exactly. I mean, have a look at that cap. You can see everything. You can see how the graphics are working. And it's exactly the same when you're batting. Exactly the same. You want to get your eyes as close to the ball as possible. So you want to be watching the ball. You're coming in. You're coming to bowl to me. Now, like I say, my trigger was because when bowlers got too fast, I needed to be in a, in a position where I was ready to pounce and I was ready to move. This happened at the age of 18, 19, 20, when bowlers started to bowl 85, 90 miles per hour. So that's what that, that's what, I don't care if you trigger, I don't care if you don't trigger. That's, that's no. I'm going to trigger because it's what feels normal to me. I used to trigger, get myself into position. My bat was still coming down in line with the stumps. My left leg was always on around about leg stump, maybe middle and leg. And I had the ability to bring my back down in a straight path. Not out here. In there. When the bowler releases the ball, I wanted to make sure that my back was up. So I was in a, in, a, in a place where I could strike. So what I would say to every single batsman out there, whenever the bowler is ready to deliver the ball, never have your back down. Never, ever, ever have your back down. Because... Imagine the ball, okay, the guy's running in, he's running, he's running into ball, now your bat's still down here, you're tapping away, tapping away, bowls the ball. As he bowls the ball, you've got to lift your bat up, you've got to make a decision, and you've wasted half a split second. So my advice to you is to think about this. Bowl is running in, bowl is running in, bowl is running in. Bowler gets to the umpire, lift your bat up. Bowler delivers the ball, make your play. Make your play. Make your play. The reason why I say that again is it's all about preparation and it's all about training and it's all about training your brain to do the right things. The way to deal with the pressure of every single time you go out to bat because none of us want to fail, we always want to be successful, is to make sure that you've practiced properly and you have the right technique. This as a start, this here as a start, is the perfect technique. Having your bat up, being ready to pounce and being ready to play is the perfect technique. If you walk out to bat in the middle, if you walk out to bat in your school game, in your club game, in any game that you play, and you're ready and you know that you can play the best delivery that anyone bowls to you, you're going to be absolutely fine and you're going to play with a load of confidence. If you're able to defend the best delivery, I should say, not play the best delivery. If you're able to defend the best delivery, that's when you're going to definitely have a lot of success. So I know this is this might be as simple as anything. You might be thinking, oh, I do this, I do this, I do this. That's absolutely fine. This is the first time I'm YouTubing. This is the first time I'm talking, and I know what I'm teaching my little man. There will be 
um, master classes where I'll start talking about hitting the ball through extra cover. Um, another little drill you can do at home and this lockdown period at the moment is incredibly tough. Um, we've talked about the catching, we've gone through the catching drills, we've gone through the cricket drills. Top hand, if you're a right hander, you're left hander, left hand. Really, 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 really strong. So it's about making sure you can hold the bat that you're going to use in the left hand and tap her up. Tap her up. Keep tapping that ball up. That's what that's all about. I know that the bat that I'm using is perfect for me when I can just keep going like this for ages. If your bat's too heavy, you won't be able to do this. You need to strengthen your top hand. If you're a left-hander, it's going to be your right hand. We keep tapping it away, tapping it away. Then you can start getting funky if you want. I'm not very good at that. I used to be, well, not anymore. Little drill you can do at home there. Just keep tapping it up, tapping it up, tapping it up. Here's another one. All of you guys, it's the start of your cricket season and you've got new bats. It's about knocking your bats in. Get a sock. I spent hours and hours and hours as a kid doing this. Choosing a bat, just knocking it in. Let me tell you, that is gonna annoy the hell out of your parents. That's gonna annoy the hell out of your mates. But it has to be done. That's part of that's part of the early part of summer. That's part of getting ready for the season. That's part of growing the love that you've got for the game. I still love it. I played cricket for 20 years. I can still stand here and knock a bat in. So there's the tap-up drills. Um, I think that uh, I've shown you um, the stance and where to stand. Um, I've shown you your exercises you need to do to get started. I've shown you uh, a couple of drills, a couple of catching drills, one minute right hand, one minute left handed. Then you can start getting really, really funky if you wanted to, and you can start throwing the ball into, into, the, into the side of a of a, of, a, of a thing, get going there. You can get as creative as you want in your catching. If you can catch well, and you can catch real well with the tennis ball, it means your eyes are gonna be really, really, really in tune with the game. And when you're gonna go and get started, you know you can start and you're gonna have um, something ahead of, ahead of your opposition. So let's have a look and see what, um, I'm going to have to get better on the technological side of this, but there's a, goodness gracious, there are questions galore. How can I get myself into these? My word. Radio. Oh. Um. Oh. My word. Um. The cover drive. The cover drive is something that we're going to talk about um, next week for sure. Uh, I think that all I wanted to do this week was to speak to you about uh, the back position, uh, where you get to in your stance, uh, how you um, teach yourself to, to be very good. They say that practice makes perfect. Well, unfortunately, in the game that we play, practice doesn't make perfect. Uh, it gives you a perfect mind, and it's certainly, certainly not going to be a game that you play where you have every single day as your best day. It's not going to be that way at all. It is going to be a game that frustrates you. It's going to be a game that uh, you have a look at my numbers. Uh, how many? 104 test matches. I think I made 23 or 24 test hundreds. So the majority of the times that I went out to bat, they weren't good days. So you've got to deal with failure. You've got to understand failure. Have a look here. So the cover drives you guys wanted me. How do I play the Yorker? Yeah, we'll get to that. The mindset. I think this is actually quite um, uh, key. Will and Kate Brooks. What is your mindset when you get out to the middle? Very, very good question. And it's a very good question in the current state of affairs that we're sitting in at the moment. It's a situation where mental health is something that's spoken a lot about, but it's something that we can start to train our brains around. And what sport gave me was the ability to tune into my mental health and to tune into my mental well-being. 
and to understand that um, I need to be mentally strong to be able to cope with pressure, to be able to deal with failure, to be able to un expect failure. And that's something that uh, uh, I learned over a long time. So to answer your question, again, Will and Kate Brooks, what is the mindset when you get out to the middle? My mindset when I get out to the middle is to enjoy because I practice well. And there's a big, big difference. A lot of people always talk about the bright lights. When the boxer gets in the ring, it's like bang, 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 carry on. However, all the preparation that is led into that boxing match is what helps the boxer or the batsman enjoy the arena that they're in. And I'll say that again. All the preparation that I did made sure that every single time I walked out into the middle, I gave myself the best chance of being successful. You're talking about the end result. I talk about the process. The process starts by making sure you've got a good technique. The process starts by making sure that when you stand in a position to be able to strike as a batsman, you're in that perfect position. You're happy with your setup. You're comfortable in your setup. You know that you have prepared so well that when you walk out into the, into the middle, your mindset's great. Now, I'm not saying you're going to win every day. I'm not saying that you're going to be perfect every single day. But what I am saying is that you're going to give yourself the best chance for you to be successful because you know you haven't cheated yourself. You're looking in the mirror at yourself. You know that when you go to bed the night before your game, whether you've done everything you can to be successful the next day. Have I? Have I been successful? Have I played enough balls? Do I know who I'm playing against? Have I gone and had a look at the wickets? If you get a good ball, you get a good ball, no problem, you're bad again. But have you done everything? That man in the mirror, you got to look at that dude. you got to look at that girl. you got to look at yourself and you're going to say, have I done enough to be successful that day? And I think that's the most important. The number of times I get asked about mindset when you're walking out to the middle. Mindset when you walk out to the middle to bat should be freedom. I did an interview with the BBC only a couple of days ago and they were talking about my mindset in 2005 in that Ashes series. They were talking about my mindset in um, in the Wankhede Stadium in India when I got that 186. What were you thinking? I mean, goodness gracious, it was a huge crowd. It was so noisy. It was the final day of the Ashes. Well, I walked out to bat at the Oval in 2005 thinking, okay, so Breckley's bowling quite fast at the moment. How am I going to get through Breckley? Am I going to be able to defend Breckley's best ball? Is he swinging it at the moment? No, he's not swinging it. Is he bowling fast? Yeah, he's bowling fast. Have I faced anybody as fast as Breckley? Well, I've been facing him for four test matches. So pace is not a problem. I'm not worried about results. I'm worried about how I prepared. How have I prepared? Have I prepared well enough to play Breckley? If he runs in and bowls me a ball on the top of off stump, am I good enough to hit it? I had decided that the night before that if McGrath, Lee, Warren bowled me their best ball, I would be able to defend it. I'd be able to play the delivery. And that's the mindset that I want all of you guys to get into. That is me begging you to get yourselves into the mindset of knowing that game day is the day that I go out to go and have fun. And it's the day that I go out to go and enjoy myself. It's so, so important to understand that. If there's one thing you take away from today is that mindset of knowing that game day is the day that I enjoy what I do and I make people proud of what I do because of the way that I've prepared. I hope that helps. I really do hope that helps. Kate, uh, who was it? It was, um, uh, there it is, Will and Kate Brooks. Um, what else is there? Someone thrown at you. Yeah, you can get somebody to throw at you. Of course you can. There's another little drill that I actually thought of beforehand and I was thinking about it. It's quite difficult here to play it here. Um, but it's, again, I was talking about making sure that you keep, I don't need to lift, lift it up. You can think about 
the one hand in shot, making sure that you keep this hand as hard or as, as, as strong as you can, and be perfect. Be absolutely perfect. All this is about being perfect. I just want you to be perfect. I want you to strive for perfection because the reason I want you to strive for perfection is that when you get into game day, you need to know that you have played the best, best practice ever. If you've practiced well and your practice is the best, you'll be comfortable to know that you're doing the right things and that you can be successful and that you'll make yourself proud. And I cannot stress the importance of that. So strive for perfection when you're practicing. When I used to practice and I used to have somebody throwing the ball down to me, I wasn't just happy with defending a good ball. I wasn't happy with just hitting a ball through extra cover. I wanted to know that every single time I hit that ball, bang, I hit that gap. Whenever I played in the nets, I used to say I used to set a field for myself in my head. Jimmy Anderson was running into ball to me in the nets, or uh, Grant Swan was bowling, or Darren Goff was bowling in the early years. I always use Stephen Harmison when Freddie, I mean, goodness, Freddie and Jimmy Anderson were actually two freak shows. They used to knock me over all day long in the nets. I hated facing Jimmy and Freddie. They were just too good. But the other bowlers, I used to set a field. Swan used to bowl and I used to set a field. Right, he's going to have a long one back because he wants me to take a risk. But middle's going to be up, extra cover's going to be up. He might have a short leg. So how am I going to get off strike at the start to the spinner? I'm going to pick his leg. I'm going to get myself into the good position that I've talked about. I'll stand on leg stump. I'm going to lift my bat up. I'm going to make sure that I've got a, a sweet, a sweet um, swing of the bat that can cover my stumps. Can I defend his best delivery? If he runs into ball, can I defend his forward? Defend. Yes, I'm comfortable. It's a little bit shorter. Defend. Yes, I'm comfortable. When you're comfortable in that space, I promise you now, when you're comfortable in that space, you will enjoy game town and you'll game time, sorry, and you will never, ever, ever ask me that question again about mindset. What else is there? I probably need to get somebody reading this out to me. There are so many. Uh This is the best moment in my career. There's so many. There's a lot. There's a lot of wonderful times that we've had. I want to keep this just down to how do you convert 50s into 100s? Right. What a question. What a question. How do you convert 50s into 100s? I found the most difficult period of play getting to 10 and getting to 20. That's what I found. I found the most difficult, difficult time getting to 10 and getting to 20. Once I got to 10, I always set myself a target in test matches to get to 10. How do I get myself to 10? 10 on the scoreboard looks a lot better than any single figure score. And I didn't mind if I got out after 10, I was like, okay, I failed and made me really irritable and made me really cross. But I was like, okay, it is what it is, but it looked a lot better on the scoreboard than one, two, three. It's certainly a duck. I'll try to get off naught as quick as I can. Getting from 50 to 100 is about enjoying the moment and, and, and still going through the basics. You never, ever forget the basics when you're batting. It is so important never to forget the basics when you're batting. And it doesn't matter. When there's a change of spell that comes in, if a new, ball come, new bowler comes in, you've got to respectfully watch what he is delivering because bowlers are up, bowlers are down, like batters are up and batters are down. Batters have good Good sessions, batters have poor sessions. Bowlers have good sessions, batters have, uh, bowlers have um, good sessions too. So you've got to understand that you've got to respect your opposition the whole time. The best time to bat is after 100. Best time to bat is after 100. But converting 50s to 100 is to make sure that you don't get place and you realize that you've only achieved your goal if you set your goal at 100 once you've got that 100. Some people set their goal at 50. You get to 50, goodness, then the lights are shining as bright as you can and you can have as much fun as you want. Certainly in T20 cricket, you get to 50, that's a wonderful innings, as long as it hasn't taken you 60 balls. Getting to 50 or 30, 35 ball is fantastic. You've helped your team. Your team stand a good chance of winning. 
So it's about the levels at where you want to get to, about the levels that you're thinking about. It's about the levels that you're at. Now, I'm really sorry if I've rambled on about the small things. However, there is no way in this world I could have played a switch hit if I didn't have the defense to be able to defend Mura Lithran's best off spinner. I played the switch hit against Mura Lithran, and I'm talking about the switch hit now. I played the yeah, the first shot was against Mura Lithran at Edge Baston. One drill I'm gonna give you here now, and we're gonna build up to this. We're gonna build up to the switch hit shot. It's gonna probably take three or four weeks before we do it, but I'm gonna show you how I started. I played a lot of, a lot of squash and a lot of, uh, yeah, I played a lot of squash and a lot of hockey, sorry, when I was a youngster. I broke my arm as a kid. You can see here, you can see the scar on my arm. There's a massive scar along my arm here and along the other side here too. Massive scar on my arm. So for two seasons, I wasn't able to play rugby. I, mean, I was in school in South Africa. I wasn't able to play rugby. And... Uh, I've got a dry mouth. I wasn't able to play Randy for uh, a couple of seasons. I fell off, um, I fell off a flying fox, one of those uh, zip lines. The hook slipped and I fell, and my arm was hanging like that from here at the age of 12. And what that made me do is it made me play hockey for a season or two. I wasn't able to play rugby. The first season I came back to play rugby, I was playing at fullback. I took a catch. As I took a catch, a guy ran in to tackle me, and he snapped my arm again which means I needed pins and plates. And so I had pins and plates in my arm at the age of 12. Leading on from there, again, I had to go and, I had to go and learn this school skill. I had to go and play hockey. Played hockey a lot for two seasons. Ended up enjoying it, ended up doing okay. Ended up uh, wherever I ended up. I think I was playing B team or C team. I was a very late developer at school. Very late developer. And I also played a lot of squash. Playing the forehand, playing the backhand. And I think the greatest skill that squash taught me was the ability to play a controlled backhand. Now, we all know that in squash with the court, you get into the back corner, and if you want to beat your opponent, you lob it up into the back corner. And if you get the ball to stop, unless they have the ability to hit the ball out, that's generally a weak shot. So what I did when I played squash, the mental state that I got into as a competitive sportsman, I wanted my best shot to leave my backhand out of the corner of a court. Now where that's leading to, what do you do when you play the switch hit? And what shot's that? What shot's that? That right there is a backhand squash shot. Bang! Up the line. Bang! Up the line, bang, up the line, bang, up the line, bang, up the line. You get low, bang, up the line, bang, up the line, bang. If you want to play a drop shot from there, you can get into position thinking that the wall is over there. I don't hit this chair. Thinking that the wall is there. See, this is your squash court. I'm facing forward. Ball comes up, goes over my head. I want to get into a position here. I want to actually just play a drop shot. There's your control drop shot. Bang, to that position. So squash gave me the ability to make the switch hit feel incredibly easy to play. So easy to play. The hard part was the timing of getting from Eurolith running into bowl to that position to take it away. So what I want you to do for the next week, do it if you want, and throw the ball up against Oh, how am I going to get? How am I going to do this? Throw the ball up against there, and I want you to play that shot. I want you to throw the ball there, and I want you to play that shot. Okay, that is the backhand drill. That's the start of where I'm going to get you playing the most perfect switch hit. Stand in the position like you are there. Bang, bang. You can get somebody to lob the ball to just land just in front of you, and you can just. Slap away, slap away, and slap away. 
Let's have a look. I think we may have time for one more, and then I'm going to give you the challenge for that pair of Oakleys. Let's have a quick look here. How do I stop? Right, Reese Cooper. How do I stop myself from moving my back foot when I play a leg side shot? How do I stop myself? Reese, how do I stop myself moving my back foot when I play a leg, a leg side shot? I think this is what you mean. You're playing a leg side shot. I can't imagine your legs going this way to play a leg side shot. I can imagine you lose. What that is, is you're losing balance. Watch my head. You're playing a left side shot. means that your head is not going towards the ball. I want you, let me just tilt this up a little bit. Excuse me. I want you to understand that on the front foot, when I was talking about front foot, I was talking about getting into this position, making you got a free flow of the bat, being able to strike, exactly the same on the back foot. Head, eyes, as close to the ball as possible. Your head is the heaviest part of your body. You're going on the front foot. Bang, 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 bang. Same on the back foot. Bang, bang, bang. Your head, you're trying to get your eyes as close to the ball as possible. Just quickly on the back foot. Think about a boxing analogy, and I like boxing, talking about boxing. When a boxer is boxing, and he's winning in a boxing battle, he's here. Boom, 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 boom. That's where he's winning. When a boxer's losing, he's all over the ropes and he's copping it, bang. That's where he is. Your position of strength as a batsman is if you're winning a boxing bout. You're winning a boxing bout, bang, bang. Eyes close to the target, boom, 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 move. In, out, in, out, boom, bang, boom, boom, duck, move, sway. There's your analogy. Reese. I hope that helps you, brother. Oh, and I've got a bit of a sweat going here. Um, where are we? Yeah, no, guys, I think, I think I'm going to give, give it a go. Uh, you guys know how much I love batting, how much I love talking about batting. Uh, I think some of my most favorite times were coaching, um, even on that final Ashes tour that we played in, in Australia when it all went horribly wrong, I was designated um, to help the tail enders. Mitchell Johnson was running in bowling 500 miles an hour, it felt like. And we had a tail that was not very, um, we had a batting order that wasn't very happy with the way that Mitchell Johnson was bowling and the speed that he was bowling. And I was tasked to go and help the bowlers with their batting. And uh, I mean, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I love talking about batting. I, can, I think you can hear that on my commentary. And uh, it's, um, it's something that I'm very, very passionate about. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, in the lockdown period, I think I'm going to load up another couple. I saw that there's a couple of videos, this front foot and back foot that I put up uh, last week. I've done another couple. Now, obviously, you can understand that I can't go and film things properly at the moment because of social um, uh, what's it called? Isolation. Um, Self-isolation. And so, yeah, it's quite difficult to get a four-year-old to throw me balls. or I don't really um, chuck my children all over social media. So that's why my kids aren't involved in this. So I'd love to get Dylan to throw me balls and I could coach Dylan, but it's just not something that uh, we do. Uh, so I hope that you respect uh, my decision to not plaster um, our children all over social media. It's just not something we do. However, we can once this crisis blows itself over and I hope that all of you are, are good and well and safe that uh, we can we can really do some fun stuff and get in the nets and start filming some cool stuff and, and bring you some fun fun things so the next week what you're going to do you're going to get catching you're going to get if you've got a cricket ball or a tennis ball you're going to get throwing the ball between between your hands you're going to be making your hands tough you're going to be making your hands tough like we talked about there she is, nice and tough. You have to, tend to, you have to soften your hands, but firm your grip. You get the tennis ball. You're going to make your hands nice and tough. You're going to squat well for me. You're going to get nice and strong in your squat position. You're going to get nice and loose. Hopefully schools can go back in the next 
month or six weeks, wherever it is, we're government-led, but who knows? We might get back. You guys might get back playing school cricket. You might be doing stuff. Who knows? In the next couple of months, you've got a few months to get yourself nice and fit, nice and strong, uh, and nice and energetic. You're going to do the catching, the two-handed catching. You're going to do the one-handed catching. You're going to swap over to the other hand. That's what you're going to do for me. And you're also going to play the backhanded Squash shot. Bang. Because we're going to teach you how to play the switch hit. Because that's what everybody asks me is how do I play the freaking switch hit. <laughs> anyway, dudes, right. Almost enough for me. I said I was going to give these away. That's exactly what I said I was going to do. I need to write down the email address. Uh, da -da -da -da. Here it is here. The email address. I need you to send videos. S-T-E-P-H at kp24.co.uk Right, there she is there, Steph. Steph at kp24.co.uk. I think you've got that. On my Twitter handle and on my Instagram page, you'll see Steph's email address. I mean, it's coming up in the opposite way there. S-T-E-P-H at kp24.co.uk Now... The winner of these, and I will announce the winner next week, Friday, at 1 o'clock. It's all about these guys. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, it's not about these guys. That's too easy. Way too easy. It might not be easy for you. And that's absolutely fine. We're starting off the season. Your back might be a little bit too heavy for you. And that's absolutely fine. But there's only one winner. I am a competitive guy. There's only one winner. Those glasses are going to go, that go to the person, boy or girl, who can tap the ball on the side of their bat the most. It's not a first go. It's not your second go. It's not your third go. You have a whole week. By next Thursday, 24 hours before our next session. So next Thursday at 1 o'clock UK time, which is 5.30 Indian time, uh, 2.30 South African time, Australia sometime, early morning in the Caribbean, you're going to have to have lodged your email with the video of how many you've done. The person who does the most in one go wins those glasses. That's what they do. That's what I, I want you guys to do. I want you guys to get good. I want you guys to get great. I want you guys to get better. Uh, I'm passionate about the game of cricket. I love the game of cricket. I know you guys love the game of cricket. To see all these questions just makes me smile. It's amazing. So many people love the game that I love. I mean, this is crazy. It's just brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Guys, thank you so much for today. Uh, I've loved it. I've absolutely loved it. Talking about it just makes me so happy. Uh, I wish you a very, very safe week. I'm going to load a couple of other videos that I recorded in Australia a couple of years ago over the weekend. Watch those. Have a look at those. Uh, tell me what you think about them. And then we'll have another session. Um, we'll have another session next week. But, hey, these here are pretty cool. Check that out. They could be yours if you win the tap challenge. You win the tap challenge, Steph, S-T-E-P-H, at kp24.co.uk. Send a video and the number of times that you've knocked it up. The winner, and I'm hoping it's in the hundreds, will win those pair of glasses. I'll see you guys next week, and thank you so, so much for joining. Um, I hope I've done this right. I hope I do. This is the first time I've done it. I'm going to find out a little bit more about YouTube. Uh, the next time around, but I've loved it. And hopefully we grow from strength to strength. Please stay safe, guys. Love you lots.